Hi students, so here we are arriving at chapter 3, Acids and Bases. You have learned this previously, Acids and Bases, there are many three kinds of definitions, the Bronzed Lorry, the Lewis, and the Arrhenius. Let's start by talking about the definition under the Bronzed Lorry theory. So, in this topic, we will need to discuss two different kinds of acids and bases, the Bronzed Lorry and Lewis. For bronzed lowry acid, it all regards the H+, plus, the proton. So for acid, it must be the proton donor. For the base, it must be a proton acceptor. In my video lecture, I'll be using the terms H+, plus, protons, and hydrogen ions interchangeably. You note that H+, plus, we can call it a proton because in the H+, plus ion, there is only the presence of one proton, zero neutron, and zero electron. So if you take a look at this picture here, the acid, which is HCl, will lose its H plus to the water, which acts as a base to accept H plus, and you get chloride and H3O plus ion. In this definition, we have something called the conjugate theory. The acid will become the conjugate base, while the base will become the conjugate acid. So if I do not give you the identity of the molecules here before and after, you can still tell me which is the acid base conjugate pair. Because acid base conjugate pair, they differ only with a single H. So you see HCl and Cl minus, when you take a difference between these two, they differ by an H. So we know that they are the pair. Then now, who is the acid and who's the base? The one who we call the acid must be the one with more H. Likewise, you have H2O and H3O+. Again, they two differ by a single H+. But since both of them will have hydrogen, so who's the acid? The one with more H will be the acid. So the other guy is the conjugate base. And if we denote that this is the base, then this guy will be the conjugate acid. Alright, we have just explained it. So in general, we can call it HA an acid with H plus proton that to be dissociated, the base except H plus, you get conjugate base, conjugate acid. So what do we know that it is a universal solvent, clean, safe, and neutral? Press it in our blood and we drink it every day. I hope we do that too. Best drink in the world. For the acid to react with a base in this case, okay, it transfer a proton over and you get the conjugate base of the acid, again take note of the presence of the pink color hydrogen. It gets lost. To where? To the base that accepts it. Now water, being neutral, it can behave as both the acid or the base depending on the situation. So in the presence of a more basic substance like ammonia, which we know is mildly basic, then water behaves as the acid. So water we now transfer is proton to ammonia becoming the conjugate base and you get ammonium ion that's the conjugate acid of ammonia so that's exactly the reason why ammonia will give off a pH above 7 at room temperature in water because if you dissolve ammonia in water it produces the hydroxide ions and this is exactly the explanation given that when you dip a limous paper into a solution of ammonia you see that it will change blue. So the strength of the acids differ in the ability to donate H+. We always treat it like equilibrium. In water, how favorable is the ability for the acid to give off its H+. If this equilibrium lies on the right-hand side, it shows that at any point of time, there's a higher proportion of H3O+, and its conjugate base compared to before the undissociated form and we can use mathematical representation to denote this. We have a big K here in chemistry, we call it equilibrium constant. Now for this case, we call it the acid dissociation equilibrium constant because we are referring to how strongly the acid gives off H+. So as usual, we always take into account of the concentration of the product corresponding to the stoichiometric ratio as the power over the reactant concentration according to the power as well. So it's now all one mole each, and that's why the power of these concentrations are all one. 
we notice that we could simplify the Ka expression which we term acid dissociation constant or acidity constant dropping the water term because water is in excess in our acid medium so it virtually doesn't change so what changes will be these three identities concentration now this Ka here can measure the strength of the acid as we know a strong acid means what it can dissociate fully or to a high extent to give rise to H plus or H3O plus so if I have a lot of this side the top the numerator will be very high the bottom will be very low so I get very high Ka so Ka high means it is a stronger acid right we explain this for weak acid it doesn't like to give away it's H plus it will hold it back so when it's holding it back weak acid you stay to the left of the equilibrium so you have a low Ka in textbooks or notes we also see the term called pKa there's a little p in front of that not the one we consume in the food but lower casing p now in science where you have a p something pH pKa pKb you've seen before pI the p represents a function in mathematics also known as the negative logarithm why do we do that you might ask because this k value the equilibrium constants or whatever values are so huge in the form of thousands hundreds millions you could rise up to billions but if you do a negative logarithm we can reduce the size of these numbers comparatively and we can put them in the same graph so we don't have like 0 1 10 100 and then suddenly you have thousands and millions of that then we we can't see the scale you see but when we do a negative logarithm we can reduce the gap between these values and see a trend so since we are having a negative relationship that's inversely proportional high ka means low pka low ka means high pka so as you know high ka means strong acid which means low pka be very clear on this a chart here again do not memorize but you should know a general trend that hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid these are considered strong acid and all your organic acids are weak in general we group them together water is neutral alcohols are neutral but if you term them as neutral there's always a slight difference in acidity level so we compare water and ethanol we always compare the stability of the conjugate base because if the conjugate base is stable that means what the H plus could stay on their own that means I can release H plus and it is acidic but the thing is hydroxide is a very reactive base so once I generate hydroxide in water I can grab the H plus instead and go back to water and hence water is neutral same thing for an ethoxide ethoxide is even more basic than hydroxide because of the electron donating effect by the ethyl group so once I form ethoxide ethoxide is so reactive you just grab the H plus and push it back to the ethanol and that means that ethanol doesn't like to give off its H plus but hydrochloric acid is a different story same for nitric acid once it goes to this side here it is stable it doesn't like to go and pick up the H plus and go back to its neutral molecule it doesn't you may ask why there are several reasons for these because they exhibit resonance structure the localizing the electrons and charges make it very stable for chloride there is no resonance form however due to its sheer large size and electronegativity value it can hold on and sit naturally with a negative charge very comfortable